Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, I want to look at ways to blend two separate 3D scenes together and look at ways to process them individually and then process them together and see what results we get. So let's just get started, shall we? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put snap to grid on. I'm going to make a jit.world at enable one at floating one at dim uh, 1920 by 1080. That ought to do. OK, let's put that there. Uh, let's maybe do at erase color zero, 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 zero. Right. OK, I thought I would sort of try and do like a kind of um, sci fi computer interface cog turning type thing. Um, yeah, so let's just see how we get on. Let's maybe make a jit.gl.grid shape at shape sphere at dims. Um, I want it to be quite a lot on one axis, less on the other. So let's try 10 on the X and 100 on the Y and we'll do at matrix output one because I want to put that into a mesh jit.gl.mesh with a draw mode of um, line underscore loop. OK, let's connect that. Ah, right. That doesn't look right at all. No, I did these the wrong way around. OK, let's do 100 by 10. There we go. So we've got sort of lots of dimensions going around here, but there's only so many going down here. That's that's fine. OK, so now I want to sort of displace that with some noise. So I'm going to make a JIT dot noise and I'm going to do three planes float 32 and I'm going to do this the other way around. I'm going to displace it sort of by 10 pixels and 100 on the other. I don't know if I need that second number. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, now let's get a, let's click on this. I'm going to hold shift, press J, and I'm going to type jit.op at op pass to pass the X axis, pass to pass the Y axis, and plus, so that we can use this noise to displace the Z axis. Bosh, and we get this. So I get this sort of fun looking kind of cog type thing or something. Um, right, let's get a jit.gl.material here, connect that to the mesh, and then let's maybe, um, I'm going to put the emission up to a white. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to use any of the other stuff. I'm not going to light it. At least I don't think so. Okay, let's close that. So let's right click, uh, well, yeah, click here. Go uh, change attributes to arguments. Good, that's all good. So yeah, now I kind of want to turn it. I want to turn the cog. So let's go um, pack. Oh, what have I done? Pack, rotate, X, Y, Z, zero, zero, zero. And we'll connect that to our mesh and we'll make a jit dot time. Connect that to the third or fourth inlet. Right now our cog is turning on the Z axis. That's good. Let's make it turn a little bit faster at speed uh, 10. All right. So now we've got a sort of turning cog, right? <laughs> um, let's maybe like change the noise um, displacement every once in a while. So let's maybe get a jit.matrix and put that after the noise. And we're going to get the jit.bang, the best object that's ever been invented ever. Put that in there. And I'm going to make a jit.slide at slide down 10 at slide up. 10. I'm going to put that in between there and there. And I'll make a speed limb here, speed limb, uh, let's say 3000, so that every 3000 milliseconds, the render bang will um, bang the noise. Right. Okay. So every three seconds, it's going to sort of change like that. Okay. Ah, that's kind of fun. Right. Ah, good. Okay. Let's just move all this over here. I'm going to copy all of it. Let me just check everything's okay. Yeah, this is all looking fine. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to take a copy of this. And then this one, I'm just going to uh, rotate in the opposite direction. So we'll say at speed minus 10. So it's going to rotate the other way. So we've kind of got these two cogs turning in different directions. Uh, we can maybe make it a different color. Let's maybe make it sort of a red. Yeah, that looks quite science fiction. Uh, okay. Okay, let's close that. Let's go click on this, transform, change. Uh, yeah, do that thing. Right, okay. 
We could maybe make the lines a little bigger. Let's say at line width two on that one. Yeah, and we'll do the same here at line width two. Okay, they're a little bit thicker. Okay, right. So they are sort of two. I know it looks 2D, but it's actually 3D. Um, if we sort of made a jit.gl.handle here, jit.gl.handle, connected that to our world, and they sort of clicked in here, we can see this is actually sort of, that's actually what we're looking at, which is kind of fun too, um, but not what I want. So I'm going to reset that, reset, put that back to where it was, and I'm going to delete it. Um, we could, if we wanted to play with the scale of these a little bit, we could maybe increase the scale on the Z axis to sort of make it a little, you know, you get this kind of thing, which does look kind of nice. Uh, we could maybe do it on the, which one was that? That was the red one. We could maybe do it on the white one. Let's go at scale one, one, three. Yeah, it's only a small difference, but okay. So yeah, we've got these two 3D objects. They are rendering to the same 3D space. They're rendering to the JIT.world. But now I want to render them to their own separate worlds. And we're going to do that like this. We're going to make a JIT.GL.node at capture one. Uh, oh, not JIT.node, JIT.GL.node. What a mouthful. Right. Connect that to that. That's going to disappear because now that is no longer rendering to the JIT.world. It's rendering to this. So if I make a JIT.P window here and connect that to that, we can see that it's rendering there. Good. So now what we've got is we've got that 3D scene as a, a, a two-dimensional texture. Um, and then we can process it um, individually of the other one, which is what I want to do. So I'm just going to put that there and maybe just move all this up here. And yeah, so let's look at some things we could do with this. We could apply a little bit of feedback. Let's make a jit.gl.pix, put that in there. And then I'm going to make another one here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say multiply by 0 0.9. Whoops, multiply by 0 0.9. And then we can sort of do like a feedback loop here like this. So we can come out of this one. And then when we come out of this one into this one, it's going to add them together. And then we're just getting a little bit of feedback there. As it sort of turns, it's leaving these trails behind, which is very nice. Um, when that's really big, it might not look as good. Yeah, obviously the jit.p window resolution is very small, but what we can do is we can go jit.jit. Well, actually we could try jit.effects.blur. Yeah, let's try this. See what this does. Uh, I was going to use the, the, the slab thing. Let's try this instead. What have we got here? A mount. Let's turn that up. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, all right, let's maybe say 0.25. Yeah, that's looking okay. All right, let's go. What other? I'm sure there's a, there are other JIT dot blur things. Uh, I'm sure, there was like another one. All right, let's have a look here. Uh, radial blur. Oh, let's try that one. Maybe uh, let's take that out. Let's put this one in. Let's see what we've got. Amount. Wow. Ooh, yeah, that is kind of cool, but not. Not really what I was going for, but that is nice. Okay, all right, let's put this one back in. A little quick look at some jit dot effects, these new things here. Very cool, very cool stuff. Uh, right, uh, yeah, so now we've got that. That's all fine. Um, let's do the same thing for the other one over here. So we'll, we'll basically just copy all of this, in fact. And all we need to do is just connect that to that. And then what we should have is the same, but for the rep, no, nope, not there, um, here. There we go. So now we've got, and there's a little bit of white. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know why some of it's white. Is it because of the material? Maybe I should put these all to red. Specular, this, maybe it's the specular. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That's better. Now it's all red. Okay, cool. That's good. Let's uh, go transform, change. Actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we've got these two separate um, textures of two separate 3D scenes. I think that's very interesting. Now I want to look at ways of blending them together. So I'm going to do that with jit.gl.pix again and simply 
put that one in there and that one in there. I'm going to make a jit.gl.layer at transform reset to connect the output of that to the layer. And now we're back rendering to the main world. What's happened to my patch? Why is that? Oh, it's because of that thing. Hold on a moment. That is bugging me. You come back down there like that. Okay. All right. So we don't need those anymore. Let's get rid of that and that. Okay. So now we've kind of got this cool, you know, two cogs turning in different directions with a bit of feedback and a bit of blurring. That's kind of nice. So now that we've got these um, blended together, we can obviously process them together with more effects. Um, we can also look at ways that we can sort of blend them. We don't have to add them together. We could multiply one by the other. Ooh, what's that? That's interesting. Uh, it's a little subtle. You can't really see what's going on, but it's kind of still quite nice. Maybe with some different source material. That could be a little bit better. Um, we could go back in here. We could divide one by the other. See what that does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so just a simple bit of maths can make a huge, that looks kind of awful, but still kind of interesting. Um, what about if we did uh, minus one minus the other? And what about if we did equal to, whoa. Yeah, so there's lots of fun that you can have with jit.gl.pix just by exploring some maths. I just want to simply add them together like that. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, now that we've got them both on one texture, we can apply some more effects. So why don't we do um, a little bit of rotation? Let's do jit.fx.rotor. And then what we can do is kind of do the, the mirror thing. If we go to the bound mode and set the bound mode to four, and then we get the offset and uh, move that to something like 0.5 here and 0.5 here. Then we get this, which is very nice. Um, so that's like a mirror if we do it like a different bound mode. That is a little bit more like what I was going for. I kind of quite like that. It's sort of got like a kind of menu screen or 80s sci-fi rolling credits. <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about this I kind of like. So I'm going to go with that one. So let's go. Um, what do we get? click the button here? Transform, change attributes, to arguments. Good. Now I don't need to worry about that anymore. Um, we could do like a little, we could try and feed it back a little bit more. Um, we would go in here. Let's try 0.99. Ooh. Yeah, that does look good. Let's do it for the other one. Let's go into here and multiply the feedback by 0.99. Oh, that's a little bit much for the red, I think. Let's go 0.5. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, I think maybe it's a little too much. Let's go 0.95 on that one as well. Now I could put a parameter in to, uh, you know, control that from the outside. I don't really want to do that. I just want to set it and forget it. And that's looking kind of nice. Um, what else could we do? That's kind of it really, sort of simple. Um, just the idea being that it's two separate 3D scenes that we've made one texture now. Um, we could maybe do some, let's do a jit.gl.pass at effects name grain. That's just going to add some cinematic grain. <laughs> kind of fun. And then let's do a jit.gl.pass at effects name vin, vin, I can't spell vignette. How do you spell it? Vin, vignette, vignette. <laughs> I spelled that right. Oh, I did. Good. Vignette. Um, we can connect that to that. It's going to kind of crap out. That's fine. And we'll just uh, reload that. That's okay. So now we've got like a vignette effect. We can go um, decrease the fall off a little bit to something like 0.5. And then the center, we could maybe sort of move it. Actually, it could just stay in. The Where is the center? Is zero the center or is 0.5 the center? 0.5. Exposure. Let's maybe leave that. What's this fall off doing? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's maybe put the fall off at 1.75 or something. Yeah, that's fine. That'll do. All right, let's have a look at it all big. 
Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's just sort of a retro screensaver. <laughs> it's sort of chic, I suppose. Sort of draws your attention over here, but at the same time, it's, I imagine if this was on a big screen, it'd be casting lots of nice light. Yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, so there you go. Now, um, this idea of sort of um, rendering multiple 3D scenes at once is something I'm going to look at in the future. Uh, I just wanted to get a little bit more confident at being able to do it without referring to any practice patches. But there you go. So that is how you can render two separate 3D scenes and then blend them together as textures and apply effects to them in Jitter. I'm going to go and put this on Patreon now. Uh, you can download it there if you want to support the channel. Nice. See you soon. Bye.